Good evening, everyone. Hey, this hey Fanta, I was just going to tell you, I don't know if you can see, but we do have quite a bit of people in attendance for the meeting. So this is going to be a really well attended meeting. And yeah, I think we're all ready to go. So thanks for calling in Fanta. Sure, thank you. Good evening, everyone. This is our community meeting for the traffic signal and pedestrian improvements going in at the Basswood Boulevard and Old Santa Fe Trail tra intersection. And before I want to get started, this this intersection is located in Council District 2. So if there's any representative from Council District 2, if you want to introduce yourself and give any words before we get started. Hello, my name is Mayra Camacho. I'm district director for the office of council member Flores. He is aware of the meeting. He wants to send his uh, apologies for not being able to attend. He's in flight right now from Austin and any questions you want to relay uh, uh, attendees as well to council member Flores. We're more than happy to assist as well after the meeting. Thank you. So then next we'll go over the agenda. We will talk about the project background. We'll give a project update. We'll discuss the project schedule and then we'll discuss project contact information as well. So we'll talk about the project background. So the objectives include improving traffic flow at their intersection during peak hours reducing delays and improving overall safety for all users. We're, we're hoping to improve pedestrian safety at the intersection by installing pedestrian actuated signals with push buttons and to improve pedestrian access elements such as ADA compliant ramps. Further for project background, so in June of 2019, we got the initial citizen request for a traffic signal. And since then, we've received more than six requests. In February 2020, a signal warrant study was conducted and this intersection met three warrants for signalization. And in March 2022, we received funding. So next we'll go over the project location. So this intersection is just west of I-35 and then to the east of this intersection, we have a QT gas station and we have a car wash. And then to the south, we have the Santa Fe Enclave community. And then, so this next slide, we can see the preliminary design. So we're planning on signalizing all four approaches at this intersection. And then the proposed lane assignment. So we'll have the left turns for east and west and then north and south as well. And then we'll also have the ADA ramps and pedestrian signals going all four ways as well. So next we'll talk about the signal warrant. So the Basswood Boulevard is currently a heavily traveled corridor with over 24,000 vehicles per day. And then with the new warehouse development to the north of the intersection, that that's increased the volumes as well. The intersection meets traffic signal warrants one, two, and three. And the warrants are based on the Texas Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Next, we'll go over the project schedule. So the project is currently in the design phase. There's no right-of-way acquisition anticipated. And we're currently in communications with Encore to address um, possible conflicts. We're planning for the contract execution for construction as well as construction to start this summer of 2023 with an estimated duration of eight months. And then next we'll go over project contact information. 
So the design engineer is LJA and their project manager is Scott Booth. And then with the city of Fort Worth, I'm the project manager, Fancy Caba. And then both of our information is on the slide. And then next I wanna talk about service requests. So this, this meeting is solely for the intersection of Basswood Boulevard and Old Santa Fe Trail. However, we're always open to feedback and any other requests. We have multiple ways to put in those, in those requests. And so one of those is the My Fort Worth app for Apple. There's the My Fort Worth app for Google. And then you can also text hello to 817-835-MY-FORT-WORTH or 6939. Or you can also call the city call center at 817-392-1234. And then thank you again, once again, for joining this community meeting. And now the floor is open for any questions or comments or concerns. Are you guys aware that just uh, right along that intersection or slightly ahead of it, I don't know if inadequate drainage was designed there or what, but when it rains, uh, and I don't know what that's going to do to your intersection there, it is totally clogged up with deep, deep water. I mean, you have to drive through it like five miles per hour if you don't want to drown your engine out. And I wondered if anybody's taken that into account with that intersection. Yeah, that needs, that needs to be repaired immediately. So you guys are aware of that then? Todd, do you want to answer to that? Um, the, the scope of our project does not go that far, but we'll definitely take a look at that. I'll try to figure it out if this is something that was built by, you know, the developer. And if, if it's already been, you know, beyond the two years, then, you know, the city is going to have to coordinate with our drainage folks to see what would be the best way to address that. And then we can provide uh, a feedback back to you guys. We're still designing um, the intersection um, and this is outside of the intersection, uh, but we certainly will take that into account as well. Yeah, so if there was any local drainage issues right there in the intersections um, where maybe a curb inlet was needed or something like that, we, we might add that as part of this in, these improvements. I don't think we're doing anything right like that right now. Um, if this drainage issue, is it farther to the west or to the east? It's, to the east. Uh, down just about where that intersection is. It might be slightly east of that intersection, but it's real close. In fact, I'm thinking any time uh, there is a significant rain, like a couple of inches when we have one of those. I'm thinking your intersection is going to be impacted. If you look, no, think the so. drainage, I was looking at that today as I drove by. It's, it is like the smallest the, little. 7-Eleven, that's know, where the problem maybe is. The section, the section of road in question is eastbound Basswood between Old Santa Fe and the 7-Eleven. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that needs to be repaired immediately. It's been an issue for a while. Well, certainly we'll look into that immediately. We'll get with our, um, get our engineer and our drainage folks involved. And so, and we have rains recently. Um, to see if, what, what is the best way to handle that, um, because we don't want to um, generate um, a bigger issue. We don't want our pedestrians to be sitting in water. Back next time that happens, I'll be sure and get a good shot of what it looks like, some video, and try please, to email you guys. Please, please you send it back to um, Okay. Thank you. What? Video would help a lot, yeah. Are there some questions in the chat box? Yes. Um, can Fanta see those or can Chad, can you go through those for yes. uh, Fanta's benefit? Yeah, okay. so I can, I can read the questions time. in the chat. The first one is about the um, drainage improvements. Um, yes, they agree that there's terrible water out there during rainstorms. Um, Holly has a question concerned about the traffic backup to the roundabout at Basswood and Horseman. 
Um, she's just concerned about about that. Yeah, is there, when was the traffic study done, did you say? So the traffic study for this project? In 2020, 2020, like in the spring of 2020. Yeah, you need to do a new one because there's been a lot of things that have changed since then. That that traffic is crazy. It backs all the way up over half a mile there at, at the at I-35 Access Road. It's a big. It's going to be a big impact to that that intersection. But on that same uh, note, you do realize that it was done in 2020 and it's gotten worse. Yes. Trying to so, get out. so it's not right. it's, doing a new study is not going to do any good. I mean, it's correct. already so, showing that it needs to be done. Exactly. So I'm just, so once, I'm just wondering once, if the signal light's even a feasible option at this point. Well, we have an obligation. So once we have received a request and we have conducted a study based on the Texas Manual of Traffic Control Devices, and it indicates that the warrants are met. In addition to evaluating the number of crashes, I believe we, we discovered about four crashes in the last two and a half years. We don't have an obligation to do something, to install the device. So it's been on the list waiting for funding for two and a half years. So right. um, and why we're, was doing there traffic study, we're doing the traffic study, it's gonna indicate that there's more traffic, which is gonna make it even mean more warrants. So that's not really going to, um, it's not going to change the outcome. Um, but the traffic circle was, was not part of the, the study. Uh, no, because the traffic circle is, is a total, you know, different intersection and it's beyond 500 feet away from this one. So I'm talking about why is the traffic forward. circle not being put at that intersection? Oh, well, because the request was for a traffic signal and that's what we studied. Um, <laughs> You know, we wouldn't be doing a study for a roundabout um, less. That was the request. So at this point, we well, received the request. We requested that from the city in that time frame that they look at a traffic circle. We, we did not receive. That. We did not receive that request. We received uh, the information that we received from our transportation management group that um, they documented six different requests. You know, for the traffic signal. Um, and in addition to that, installing a traffic circle that close to 35 would be counterproductive as well. Um, so at this point, the traffic signal is the option. Um, and it'll be for this intersection. It'll be timed with the I-35 signal light. Accordingly. We, cer we certainly can look at that. The I-35 uh, traffic signal is, is it's controlled by TxDOT, but we definitely can reach out to them and, and, and have a discussion with them. Because of the construction of the 3C section, which is the, the section, you know, just north of uh, Western Center all the way up to Gainesville. There's quite a bit of changes that are happening to all those intersections all up and down the 35 corridor. Well, I just don't want uh, the signal like there. I don't want to make the issue that's already a terrible issue worse. So somebody has to come out and figure out how all of this is going to work before we start construction. I just want to, and this is uh, Tyler with traffic signals. I just wanted to add that, uh, that, that the new intersection of Basswood and Old Santa Fe will be timed with the 35 traffic lights. It will be timed for, for coordination. Well, no, but you got to fix the I-35 traffic light problem. And it's on, and when you're going east, it's, it's the access road west of 35 and the access road east of 35. It backs up at both places, and it's a terrible problem. That needs to be resolved. And I want to make sure that gets resolved before we put this signal light in, because I don't want it to become worse as a result of this signal light. Well, those people driving through, they get going as fast as they want. Yeah, I said, let's said I got cut off for a minute. Should I continue going through the questions in the chat? I'm Correct. Sorry. I got dropped off also, and then it wouldn't work, so I had to join through the browser. So it might be WebEx. WebEx might be acting up, so um, yes, continue, please. Oh gosh, um, I'm having a problem now. I only see one. Do you want me to read? Yes, please. I only see one question in the chat now. <laughs> so uh, the next one was mostly a comment uh, from Jennifer. She is looks like she's happy with us installing a traffic signal because. Her kids have issue taking turns on um, password after exiting Old Santa Fe Trail. So thank you, Jennifer. 
And the next question is, um, will the westbound turn lane still not allow U-turns? So we are kind, uh, currently still looking into it. Uh, Fanta, do you want to elaborate on that? Yes, so we are in conversations with our engineer and then we're gonna discuss that and we will have that update for you if you wanna put your information in the chat. And then also we'll have a pre-construction community meeting as well and then we'll be further in the design and then we can show you the, the final alignment. So if you allow U-turns there, it's gonna make it impossible for the uh, residents entering into Santa Fe Enclave to be able to get into their neighborhood because it's gonna back up so far with people trying to turn left going westbound on Basswood. <clears throat> yeah, so I just, we will I just, follow up I just, with... Go ahead, Chad, sorry. I was just gonna make sure I, right now, I believe there's, you know, a U-turn is prohibited in both directions, yeah. but is there one specifically that you're concerned about? Is it, is it the folks traveling west who want to make a U-turn and go back to the highway, yes. or is it the other turn? Yeah. turn, you turn yeah, yeah, it's the ones that are going west on Basswood trying to U-turn because of the, they're trying to get over to the uh, the gas station there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eleven, and it's it's bad right now. A lot of people do U-turns there. It's very dangerous. Right. You turns going in both directions causes so much uh, yep. danger on that on that uh, intersection in both directions. Yeah. So we don't want to allow the U turns. Period. And, I mean, if you're going to allow them after you put in the signal light, the traffic's going to back up there to where it's you're not going to be able to go left <coughs> no, you when you're going westbound. So you need to. We need to start enforcing that. <laughs> Nobody looks at the signs. Yeah, we, under, we understand that there was some, um, I don't know if I would call them complaints, but folks reached out to the city and said, this is really a big issue out there. Um, and those signs were installed prohibiting U-turns, but we understand that it might still be a problem, even though those signs are, are out there. That's what was placed in it too. They do it every day, no matter the police. Somebody said that. It might be, uh, she's in her head. She's the one that's been pushing to get the, the light. Somebody said it would have been better if they would have put a light instead of a ram about down at um, West Bend, and it would have. It would have been, yeah. That would have. Traffic there, yeah. <clears throat> They're not hearing us, are they? Yes, we, we're hearing you. We're just waiting for you guys to finish. We don't want to interrupt, and we're trying to, um, you know, we can work with our. Uh, with our police officers, try to find out who's the MPO, the neighborhood patrol officer for that area, and ask him to, you know, increase, you know, patrolling of that area, you know, for the U-turns. Um, I, I don't think that we will remove the existing signs just because we're going to signalize the intersection. I mean, if the U-turns are a safety issue, the, the, this, the, you know, we will continue prohibiting those. Um, but keep in mind that, you know, if someone is exiting the gas station and they want to go back to 35, they're going to make the U-turn regardless, right? Unless they get there's a, a cop there watching them. Um, but we definitely will will coordinate that, you know, with our uh, PD folks and um, we make sure that if that, we, we restrict U-turns at intersections, you know, when, when we have a safety issue. Um, but just trying to be realistic and understanding that, you know, some of those businesses on that other side, on the north side of Basswood, uh, that they don't, they, they're like riding right out and their customers are going to want to go back to 35. They're going to make a U-turn somewhere. Um, well, no, they can access 35 if they go out on the, uh, the east side of QT. There's an exit on the so east side. So they, so they have an exit, right? They, yeah, they, they have an exit to 35 off out okay. on the east side of QT. So they don't have to go that way. Yeah. Okay. So you in that case, they do have an alternate officers. access point. The police officers also might want to be reminded to not use that uh, no U-turn uh, sign as well. <laughs> I have uh, I have vid I have camera pictures of this happening on more than one occasion for non not emergency needs. So, also, is there a way that the 
U-turn sign, you know, it's further down, way down from where they're doing the U-turn. Could we have a second U-turn sign up at the strip on the east side of the intersection? Yes, we can actually, you know, take that into account and make sure that, you know, um, we find the best place, you know, to, to put an advance warning sign, um, an, an additional not in U-turn sign to try to enforce that. But the best thing to, to do is, you know, this happens with all traffic signs, right? It's like an honor system, like your speed limit signs and your no parking signs and, and every kind of traffic sign that you have out there in the transportation network. You know, it, it's like you're not going to have a police officer out there 24 hours a day. So it's like an honor system. You know, you expect people to follow the rules and to follow the traffic laws. So um, sometimes adding more signs doesn't help, but, you know, we can certainly look at that. That's not a that's not a big significant change. We can actually look at that, but we need to be realistic. You know, we can't control false behavior, right? So um, let's that there's one other issue and that's with 18 wheelers coming out of that north uh, side of that intersection, they're not allowed on basswood. What people? Eighteen wheelers, from what I understand, are not allowed on basswood. There's a no. There's a uh, no eighteen wheeler sign. Eighteen wheeler sign. And they come down and enter that intersection, and they get stuck out there in the middle yeah. and block the traffic. It's very, very dangerous. Yeah. So we, we, we certainly will talk to businesses and make sure. That they understand and make sure and start putting some fines out there so people get the, the gist. Yes, the enforcement is, is key for that too. Allow any 18 wheelers and you need to put it there at the north coming out of that north entrance on the basswood. You need to put signs there too. Pardon, no pardon 18 me. wheelers on basswood. So pardon do we have, There's also uh, an exit for them on on the 35 from on the east side of that. Uh, let me ask you something. So, do we have like the the no truck sign with the with the cross buck, or we have something that says no trucks or something and like it's with just, words? It's just the picture. Uh, it's, it's the picture. Yeah. So you know, not. we could actually like add a supplementary play that says no no trucks. Um, when you need to there the inside that property too before they get into the intersection. Pardon They're me. doing this in front of the police. <laughs> Pardon me, ma'am. Can I, can I please say something just before this is over? Uh, I know there's a lot of folks on this that are in opposition to this traffic law, numerous reasons. Uh, but I just want to say one thing. Uh, you know, in the morning is when it's most safety is most paramount. Uh, when we leave our neighborhood here at Santa Fe Enclave, I mean, we have people coming up that road at high rates of speed before that traffic starts to back up. And once it backs up, um, this is a different day and age. Back in the day, I could roll down my window and ask somebody to let me in. Nowadays, people just ignore you. So not only do you have difficulties getting out from safety aspect, you also have difficulties getting out just because of individuals, sure. you know, are, are just in a different different mindset. So, so every, I think everybody on this this phone call or would would you know be in that mindset that they would let you in. But the other thousands of people that come up that Basswood Road. The ones that just either, you know, they're they're trying to make that traffic light before it turns red or trying to get on 35 before they're late to work. There is just there's there's just no more kindness and, you know, and in, 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 in the majority around us these days. And, and it's going to make it once again, more wrecks without that stoplight or just difficulties us getting out. And then you've got teenagers that are trying to exit. and You've got people from our neighborhood, you know, different walks of life. And they're starting to get a little bit itchy because the teenagers not going quick enough. And so. We're starting to back up in our neighborhood. And so it's just, it's, it's a whole lot of reasons. And that exit is, or that side, there's not an entrance on 35 for Santa Fe, that service road, it's an exit only. And then, you know, people that are just trying to go across Basswood, they would have to go all the way down to the Western Center, loop around and come back. And so it's not as easy as it sounds. I wish it was, uh, but, you know, just, I, I, once again, I realize opposition is out there, but it's not just the, the backing up of the traffic. It's a lot of safety, especially in the mornings when we try to leave during the week. Thank you. And I agree with Paul. And, you know, we've, um, I see people saying, oh, just go out the exit gate and go on Western Center. We should not have to go all around Western Center and come back. We should not be locked into our neighborhood. We, we lived here before all this was built. So now we've been shut into our neighborhood and can't get out. So that we shouldn't be punished for that. And we shouldn't be concerned for our safety for that. And, you know, most of us have kids. I don't like my kids pulling out onto 35. Like Paul said, people are not kind and they're not going to let you out. So for the ones opposing it, 
this is a safety issue. And if it was your family that you have your kids in the car, you wouldn't want to take a chance of that being your car T-boned by somebody with your kids in the car. And I want everyone to understand that this is a data driven supported traffic signal. Um, the traffic signal study takes into account gaps, accidents, side distance, um, you know, the number of gaps, you know, per per 15 minutes, the number, you know, uh, now we have businesses, the gas stations on the north that, you know, people from uh, the south may want to walk, you know, to the gas station to get something to drink, et cetera. And there's not a safe way to get pedestrians across. So this this is being this is supported by data. OK, this is something that, uh, you know, it meets the warrants for traffic signal. We need to move forward. Um, and so we're going to do everything that we can to try to address, you know, your concerns. We're going to look at the drainage issue. We can certainly add additional no U turn signs. That's not a big deal. We can actually, you know, communicate with our tech stop partners and, and try to figure out if there's a way that we can, you know, improve the timing. We do have a project to add an additional left turn lane on Basswood, you know, um, out there uh, further down, uh, but we've been having some delays for other reasons. So, um, we'll there in a minute. Uh, so, um, you know, we appreciate everyone's feedback. You know, we understand that, you know, every project, you know, uh, has, you know, its pros and cons. And we're here to try to, you know, um, you know, listen to your concerns and try to do everything that we can. But, you know, we have a responsibility to, you know, to, to move forward because if we, if we decided not to install this traffic signal after we have a study that justifies this and then there's some major fatality out there, the city's liable. The city's exposed now to liability. And we don't want to lose one single person's life. So, um, you know, with that, if you guys have any other, um, you know, uh, questions or concerns, uh, well, you can always email uh, uh, Fanta with any other additional comments, and we will be we will get back with you. Well, said there's we have a few more comments. Good. Yeah, Justin. there's there. No, I was going to say that um, folks have taken the time to put comments in the chat, and yeah, we should go through all those. So, Shweta, could you pick up? where you left off and let's just, yeah. a lot of these are sort of comments about what have yeah. been said, which mm -hmm. is fine. And then I see some questions in there and some requests also. Yes, uh, so I looked at one of the comment and that said that it would be adding delay for someone to, uh, trying to get onto I-35, but I wouldn't say it would be a delay. It would be, I think maximum a minute or a two uh, for you to get across that intersection and considering safety of all the residents coming out of old Santa Fe, I think that should be not a bad decision. And then we have this another is Holly. I have a question. I have a question because I've chat I've typed in my concerns. I'm all about safety. I'm all about having a stoplight at that location. It is busy and it is dangerous. But what when you live in that neighborhood, Santa Fe, you're not thinking about the impact it's going to have all the way down Basswood to Blue Mound. Then this is going to create another problem. Then it's going to be another safety problem. You're going to have people and then the city's going to get in trouble because here we are expressing a concern for safety. And if somebody dies in the traffic circle that we have, um, it, it's, it continues to go down. I am all about having a light there, but I think they need to look at getting rid of the roundabouts on Basswood and putting lights and that will help traffic tremendously on Basswood. And it would be beneficial by doing that to help those residents at the Santa Fe location too. Because we have school buses and then you got to think about emergency response um, on a road and if the roundabout is so backed up because of that light, how is an ambulance or fire truck going to get through? Thank you. Has the study been made of what is causing all the traffic backup? Because every morning I take that traffic and another traffic light doesn't seem to be resolved, will resolve this issue. I understand that Santa Fe cannot get out, but it's backed up all the way down. The, so, main reason for the, backup is, is, the main reason for the backup is when you're going north on I-35 access road on the east side, uh, that's where the traffic backs up. 
So if you there Guys, was mention it, there was mention that if we put two left turning lanes there that would resolve the issue. Guys, so it's it's if it's also a right turning lane, the widening that right turning lane because when um there there's a new sidewalk there. When the sidewalk didn't exist, that lane was a little bit farther down and it wasn't backed up as bad as it is right now. Well the, the backup stop is for caused Santa by State. both turning lanes. The back, turning the to the right for... towards excuse me, turning to the right to towards the seven eleven. And if you go across to turn to the left, those two turning lanes are what is backing up all the traffic. Right, but the stoplight for Santa Fe is not about traffic flow, it's about safety. But but guys, it's it's really saying, it's, but it's I, gonna I, cause more traffic. I'll help solve y'all's problem real quick. It's it's about we should have gone to city council meetings. It's about infrastructure. These roads should have been wider. If they're gonna allow so many housing developments to go up, the city should have made the basswood wider from Blue Mound all the way to 35. So this is partly our fault for not attending those city meetings when they're releasing all this property to, to developers and they don't widen the road. They maintain it a two lane road both directions. So, it, it, you know, it, I know we're all trying to point fingers at each other, but it's really the city. It's the city that they should have made that road wider. Well, it's planned to be wider. It's already in the works to be wider. They just haven't done it yet. Solve a lot of these issues. They just haven't done it yet. We gotta get out of here then. We'll make basswood wider. Hell. Yeah, it's planned to be wider. Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. Thank you. We have another comment here that says, can we install the signs instead of the traffic signal? But looks like um, there were comments below that said that uh, the drivers are not following the U-turn signs that are already there. So additional signage. Uh, that's part of the problem. Yeah. That's not going to solve anything. Yeah, and then um, Holly, I think you requested current traffic study for Basswood Horseman and Santa Fe. I uh, will go back and check if you have any study for Basswood Horseman and um, we'll be we'll provide you the traffic study that we have for Basswood at Old Santa Fe. And, and, and I wanted to um, remind you guys of that previous slide. And, and I understand that that you have all these other concerns about these other locations, et cetera, but um, the best way for you to communicate is first of all communicate with your council member uh can, the council director is in this meeting about all the issues and concerns that you have or you know along basswood and the other thing is the previous slide that shows how to submit a request for the city to perform a study so uh, you know my forward thought for apple google these, these different alternatives uh, for you also to submit you know, uh, any kind of request for, you know, studies or concerns or whatever. And the, these ones are all uh, looked into and responded um, by staff. So um, the, the the basswood at Horseman Roundabout was built quite a bit ago. It was done with a, by a developer. And I think that the other roundabout for the down also was part of a development project. So, uh, you know, development developers, they just put the infrastructure in there. Uh, we get a two year warranty. Once that two year warranty is expired, you know, they, they're out of the, they're gone. So. Um, but if, but if you would like the city to do uh, some sort of study, then you need to submit a request, you know, through some of these avenues or contacting your council members office so then they can forward the request down to the appropriate staff. Murph, you don't want to eat this one. <laughs> no, 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 you need not so good. Shweta, are there more? I think there's more in the chat, right? We're having a really good response in the chat window tonight, I think. Yes, uh, I think this is the highest I have ever seen. So uh, <laughs> I think uh, most of them were the similar comments going down. Um, there was one concern regarding beach at Basswood, but I don't know, for some reason, I think I've heard of that intersection. Is it Normally there's like people on this hall. Last time I looked, it was 55. <laughs> um, what were you saying about Beach and Basswood? 
is that one of our projects with our 2022 bond? For some reason, I remember it being. Uh, if not, I think that was one of our mobility pro intersection projects, right, Lisa? Yeah, I think that we just finished it's expanding capacity completed. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's been completed. We we have another project, um, another intersection project um, somewhere on beach. I just can't recall the location. I think that's not Tarrant and Beach, I guess. Um, and I think that is mostly it to add. There were mostly comments instead of, um, and I don't think we have many questions after that. Everybody's just ready. There is people from our neighborhood on here a lot. Okay, I see a question about, you know, adding a second turn lane on the 35 North. Um, and getting rid of all the roundabouts on Basswood. I, I think we've, we've talked about about that 1. Question about the second turn lane on 35. You never know. <laughs> we can't hear you. Um, hello, um, let me. Hello, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me yes. now? Okay. Yes. Um, I wanted to answer the question about the uh, um the left turn lane, uh the eastbound left turn okay. lane from thirty five to on to thirty five north. So, thank um, you very much. Can so you can you tell the can you tell the folks who you are real fast, Roger? Yeah. So uh, we agree uh, that the, the eastbound left turn lane, um, you know, needs to be a dual left turn lane. It's a single left turn lane right now. So we have put in a request to TechStart, uh, it, it be, be, being a TechStart facility, we have put in a request to TechStart to um, uh, to make it a dual left. And, um, you know, I believe they're working on it. So uh, we'll coordinate with them again to check on the, the status of that uh, request, uh, um, you know, after this meeting. But uh, the city has put, a, a few months ago, the city has put in a request um, to, to, to convert it into a yeah. dual left turn lane. Yeah. What was your Hello? name again? What was your, what your name? name? What was your name? My name is Sagar, spelled S A G A R. So Sagar, are we talking about are you talking about a left turn of folks traveling north trying to go west on Basswood or or something else? No, no, going east on uh east on Basswood yes. um at 35 to go north. To go north. Okay, a dual left right yes. there. Okay. Right, right. Yeah, that'll help a lot. Yeah, that'll help a lot. Yeah. Uh, Sagar is one of our Sager senior traffic engineers senior with uh, engineers transportation, with, transportation uh, management, in case you guys were wondering. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Sagar. That was helpful. Thanks, Sagar. That was helpful. Sure. About when the time frame is, and sir, um, sir, I don't know about the the the, the time frame. Um, we'll be checking. Um, uh, we'll be checking with TechStart. Um, and uh, uh, getting that from them. Um, I. It looks like you have your hand raised. Do you have a question? Was was that to Holly Shweta? I see yeah. one hand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Looks like not. We also have one more question on the chat. Uh, do the tractor trailers exit the warehouse onto Basswood onto the I-35? 
uh, access road. Uh, I am not sure about that. I think they should be exiting onto the access road, but if someone knows, I'll let them answer that. I said, do the tractor trailers exit the warehouse area onto the onto Basswood or onto the I-35W access road? And she's like, I'm not really sure about that. Somebody mm -hmm. wrote, they are not supposed to, but have seen them do it. Janet, you're not on mute. Hello. You're not on mute. Oh. There's another question. Somebody, everyone needs to mute, please. There's another question on the chat, Shweta. Um, Yes. Um, how much impact to the traffic is expected by construction? I'm more open to the light after seeing the backlog of people desperate to get out of uh, Santa Fe this morning. Nobody let them out. So, how much? Uh, so the question mainly is on how much impact uh, we will have on traffic during construction. Scott, you want to take that or you want me to answer that? Uh, go ahead or, or Scott's here. I'm not sure if you've thought much about that, but we're, um, we're adding, yeah, we're, I, we're, we're making construction in towards the inside of the median, right? Go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to answer that question. So generally with a traffic signal installation, because everything is occurring along the outside edges of the road. There's usually minimal impact to the overall traffic. Uh, oftentimes, if they do need to make closures or other elements, it'll be during the non peak times of the day. Uh, so that the contractor can bring in equipment or manage things. But during the outside of those, those off peak hours, uh, generally speaking, there's minimal disruption to the traffic. Uh, we're making some some changes to the median noses and some of the other elements. Um, so there will be some some elements in the middle of the road uh, that will have barricades barrels uh, to to protect the drivers. But we should be able to maintain uh, most of the time the two lanes of traffic through the two lanes in each direction. So the full four lanes. Uh, during the time that it's being constructed. Thanks, Scott. There's another question on the chat box, uh, Shweta. I think it has to do with schedule. Yeah, so um, the question was that they didn't expect it to take eight months for us to construct the traffic signal. Um, so, uh, Lisa, do you want to answer that? about the material delays? Yes, absolutely. So um, we're, we're trying to get very creative because because of supply chain issues, anything that involves steel, it's, it's, it's in, you know, it's in experiencing some outrageous delays. Um, it's taking six months plus to procure the materials, the signal, the traffic signal poles, the mast arms, the cabinets, et cetera. So we are going to, um, we're going to issue a partial authorization for the contractor to order materials now, but we currently are experiencing five, six months plus in procuring those materials. Uh, so we're going to do that now to uh, get the, the contractor to order the supplies. Um, and the, in the meantime, you know, we're, we're, we're hope to mobilize the contractor, you know, around July or August, because by then we should be close to be getting the materials. And that way they will be able to start doing the underground work, um, all the conduit and 
you know, putting foundations, et cetera. Uh, then at that point, we cannot do any work until we can erect the signal poles. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to, you know, finish before the eight months, but we're just trying to be conservative because of what we currently are experiencing in some of the projects. Um, and this is affecting every single, you know, um, government organization, Texas uh, is experiencing the same thing on their projects. So it's a supply chain issue right now um, that is a result of COVID. Uh, the, the COVID shutdowns impact the, the manufacturing industry tremendously, uh, including, you know, steel. So uh, everybody is fighting for the same materials and, you know, the materials are not, they're not being manufactured as fast as in the past. So it's taking a long time to get those in. So we're gonna get the materials order now. Uh, we hope that they're gonna be in maybe around September. Um, and so we're gonna try to minimize, you know, try to spit out the schedule, but we're just, you know, we're just using that eight month to try to be conservative and, and make sure that, you know, we allocate for this, this uh, procurement of materials. Thank you, Lisette. We have got another question in the chat, and uh, it says, wasn't this project approved a year ago? I assume that is for us to order the traffic signal poles. And um, so that's correct. The project was approved. Actually, the project was approved um, almost three years ago. The funding was given to us last May, March, April timeframe. And then we have to go through a process to secure a designer, bring the designer on board, and we already are beyond 60% design. So we've been, we've been working on getting the project designed so we can go ahead and get to construction. So that's usually like a 12 month time frame, you know, from the time that you have to procure your, your engineering firm, uh, go in front of council to authorize that contract, and then, you know, get the engineer to, to do a survey and collect information and then just get your design developed. So. Uh, that that's usually a 12 month process. So, you know, we're, we're getting close to getting to that 90% milestone where we may be looking at, you know, construction documents, et cetera. Uh, thank you, Lisette. I think that was the last of our comments. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, I have one. Um, while we're waiting for supplies to be ordered and um, construction to begin on the lights, you mentioned that we could get additional signage out on the road for um, ensuring that U-turns aren't taking place and ensuring that the semi-trucks aren't driving down Basswood. How long does it take for that signage to get put in place? We will forward those those requests to our, our group of folks that handles the signs and markings. And I will make sure that if you put your contact information on the chat, um, your email address or a phone number that we can call you back or whoever wants, you know, a uh, uh, follow up, uh, we can get back with you and let you know, you know, what is the time frame that they're estimating because that's, um, that's another group of folks um, that we have to coordinate with. If it was if it was to be added to our plans, then we could add it to our plans, but then it wouldn't happen until we go to construction, right? But if we want them sooner, we have to coordinate with our uh, science and markings group and get a schedule for installation from them. Thank you so much, Dana. Could you get that? Sure, I'll make sure that you get that email address. Or anyone that wants a follow up for any questions or concerns, um, just please input your contact information in the chat box so we can then follow up with you. Um, so we had another question from Russ and it's uh, about the funding and us waiting to order the supplies. So uh, go ahead, listen. So, so our standard process or a standard method to build these projects is that we hire a designer. You know, we it takes about eight to twelve months to get your designer on board, get everything designed. Then you're gonna put this out for bid for a public competitive bid process. You know, and that takes four or five months to go through that process, and then you get a contractor, and then the contractor then order materials. So 
um, we, you know, when we, we, we got to a point, it was around December of last year where we decided that's going to take too long. We can't go that route. We're going to have to figure another way to do this. So, uh, we, we went ahead and got new contracts, new on call construction contracts in place. So we decided we can't do the traditional design bid build because that's going to just take forever. We have to do something else. So we went ahead and advertised and got new on call construction contracts that just got executed like a couple of weeks ago. So now that I have the contracts in place, then I can order materials. So I know it seems like it's a long time, but you know, there's a process, right? And there's all these processes that we have to follow to do, get things done, right? So the, the, the original intent, which is what how we build these projects, because you get a better price when you do the this typical design bid build, was that you know we were gonna put the project out for bid, get bids in. That process takes four to five months for you to even begin construction, and then the contractor wouldn't order materials until they have an executed contract on hand. Well, that's just gonna take too long. So last fall, around November time, we decided that we were not gonna go that route. But we needed new contracts, new on call contract construction, you know, in place. So we put those out uh, for bid. And, you know, again, it takes three or four months. So I finally got those contracts executed and ready to go. Uh, we also verified, verified with legal that, that, that we could do that, that we could actually pay a contractor for materials on hand because we typically don't. We typically have line items in the contract for furnish and install. And until that is in the ground, we don't pay the contractor. So we had to confirm with legal that we could actually do that. Um, and they did. They said, yeah, it's, it's covering your general conditions. You can do that. But you have to have proof that the materials are ordered and, and get pictures and all that kind of stuff. So that's why we're ordering the materials at this point. So um, and we did this to be able to get the project done you know, as quick as we can. Um, thank you, Lisette. And also to add on that to us, um, we have to wait until we are at certain point on the design just to confirm on the lens of the mass term that we need for the signal pole. And we usually don't get it until we are at 60% where we finalize our pole location uh, just to make sure if our mass term is like 40 feet uh, long or 45 feet or 50 feet. We don't want to go ahead and order the material for a wrong size and then have to redo the work. So that's another reason that we have to wait until this point, get everyone's comment and uh, finalize everything before we order our materials. <clears throat> so um, I hope that answers your question. Do we have any more questions? Just one quick follow up, uh, Lisette. You said you were going to send in service requests for the U turns, the signs for the U turns, eighteen wheelers, and then also for the drainage. Correct? No, we're gonna we're gonna handle the drainage with our design, right? So that would be for us to that would be an action items for us to make sure that we take care of the the drainage with with our project, right? Uh, but the signs that's going to be a request that we're going to submit to our transportation management folks, the signs and markings team, so they can go ahead and provide us a you know a schedule to to try to take care of this uh, you know quickly, uh, instead of waiting for us to you know get out there and start construction and to add those signs. So uh, the drainage we're going to try to incorporate into our plans. So we're going to be looking at that, meeting with our drainage folks, and determining you know where is the low point, where is my water sitting. I mean. Do I need to add an inlet or a drop inlet or what do I need to do to make sure that I capture that water? And that's going to be added to the construction plans and that's going to be part of our project. But the signs, the sign, the request for the additional signage, we're going to, we're going to process that as soon as possible. We're going to get with our signs and markings team and make sure that they understand it's a high priority and try to get you a schedule for the, when they can have the signs out there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Lisette. Um, Chad, do you want to close the meeting with the closing remarks? <laughs> I don't know if I have any closing remarks, but I, I really appreciate um, everyone attending tonight and providing all this great feedback. I've tried to take screenshots of everything in the chat. I'm not sure if anybody else was trying to do that, but we appreciate all the questions and, and, and the comments and 
um, yeah, we have some stuff to, to follow up on and, you know, thank you. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you. Well, um, you guys have a great evening um, and uh, we will be following up on these items and, you know, keep in touch with you guys to make sure that uh, we can keep you informed of our progress or lack of progress if we run into some other major significant thing uh, because of what's happening with the market right now. Um, but we appreciate you guys um, and please don't hesitate to reach out to us or to your council member. Um, and we we will make sure that someone gets back with you and that we will give you an answer. You guys have a good night. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thanks.